William Roxburgh was one of the greatest botanists of British India. He was the first paid superintendent of the East India Company Botanical Garden, Calcutta. These days, it is called Acharjo Jagadish Chandra Bose Indian Botanic Garden. The garden lies on the west bank of the Hooghly, Ganga, at Shippu, bank opposite Kolkata. Roxborough was the superintendent there between 1793 and 1813. He presided over a basic change in the garden's character as an institution. It was originally established as a site of experiment to identify and promote the commercial potential of Indian plants, primarily at the service of the Raj. Roxborough turned it into a hub of scientific botany. Not surprisingly, Roxborough was later hailed as the Linnaeus of India. His tireless service to the cause of Indian botany has earned him the sobriquet, the father of Indian botany. William Roxborough was originally a Scottish surgeon. He was born at Craigie in Ayrshire, about four miles south of Kilmarnock, and read medicine at the University of Edinburgh. There, he met Professor John Hope, an experimental physiologist, who was also the curator of the Edinburgh Botanical Garden as well. Dr. Hope arranged for Roxborough to be appointed as a surgeon's mate on one of the East India Company's ships. That was in the year 1766. Roxborough worked as a surgeon's mate until he was 21. By then, he had made two voyages to the East between 1772 and 1774 on the Hutton and again during 1774-1775 on the Queen. He had been studying medicine during the intervals between these voyages and completed it in 1776. He was soon offered a position of assistant surgeon in the company's Madras General Hospital. At Madras, he began to collect detailed meteorological data. He took measurements three times a day with his Ramsden barometers and Nairni thermometers. Years of observations eventually led him to publish a number of papers about the role of climate change as a possible cause of famine in the empire. At Madras, he made friends with Dr. Johann Koenig who had been a student of Carolus Linnaeus. Koenig effectively laid the foundations of the binomial nomenclature system in India. Koenig had joined the East India Company as a naturalist in 1778. Roxborough continued working with Koenig until the latter passed away in June 1785. Meanwhile, Roxborough was promoted as a full surgeon in 1780 and stationed in Samalkota, a hilly region some 200 miles north of Madras. He was soon promoted to the office of the superintendent of Samalkota Garden. In Samalkota, Roxborough experimented with new and promising cash crops such as coffee, cinnamon, nutmeg, anato, breadfruit, indigo, and peppers. He drew up a village map to help introduce mulberry cultivation. Later, he also worked on a pilot scheme for silk production from Bengal silk worms. 
The objective was to improve upon native methods of cultivation. The natives were an intimate part of these experiments. Roxborough employed indigenous artists to illustrate plants. By 1790, he had 700 illustrations ready. Roxborough took care to describe those paintings with added remarks. William Roxburgh was also instrumental in establishing first herbarium in this country. He along with his elder son and one gardener, uh, they were helping him in establishing. Along with number of native people, uh, he established this first systematic study of plants through herbarium collections. And this collections we have now uh, more than two million. It was started by William Roxburgh. He's the founder of the herbarium and collection methodology in this country. He also uh, made botanical drawings, colored botanical drawings of botanical specimens by native artists. More than 2,500 such collections are there in our Central National Herbarium here in Howda. And a duplicate set of these collections are also available in Royal Botanic Garden at Kew. Roxborough forwarded some of these drawings and descriptions to the company's court of directors in England. From these, Sir Joseph Banks selected 300 to be reproduced life-size in colour in three sumptuous folio volumes. These were published by the company in 1795, 1802 and 1819 respectively under the series Plants of the Coast of Coromandel. Others appeared in Robert White's Illustrations of Indian Botany, 1838-1840. Patrick Russell wrote the preface and possibly was the first editor. After his death, Banks' librarian Jonas Dryander took over much of the editing. It was Dryander who dedicated to Roxburgh the genius Roxburghia the type specimen of which Roxburghia gloriosoides is illustrated on plate 32. His extensive works and the reputation therefrom helped Roxborough to the post of naturalist in the Madras Presidency when Patrick Russell left for England in 1791. When Robert Kidd died in June 1793, the government of Bengal invited Roxborough to take charge of the Royal Botanical Garden in Calcutta. William Roxburgh was a British botanist and uh, physician. He utilized the services of various Indian artists and sent them to different parts to uh, make uh, these drawings which are all uh, called as the Flora Indica drawings or the Roxburgh icons. It's a complete set of 2,595 drawings uh, which are housed at the Central National Herbarium. And uh, these uh, drawings were uh, bound by A.T. Gage, who was the salaried superintendent of the Botany Garden during that period, into 35 volumes. And these have all been uh, digitized. And uh, now they can be also uploaded on the BSI website uh, very soon. Roxborough took charge of the garden from acting superintendent Dr. John Fleming in November 1793. Soon enough, he turned the collection of plants from India, Southeast Asia and the Far East into a regular systemic affair. Under Roxborough's supervision, the collections of the Royal Botanic Garden in Calcutta grew from around 300 species in 1794 to around 3,500 in 1813. In fact, many familiar trees in India today were first imported by this unassuming Scotsman. For instance, he introduced teak, bourbon cotton, cinnamon, sap on wood, American Babool and various kinds of fruit trees from the West Indies, America and Europe. 
Roxborough had sent the gardener Christopher Smith to Malacca to study cultivation of nutmeg and clove plants. Roxborough started experiments with cultivation of various fibrous plants including hemp and flax. He was able to produce a number of Indian substitutes for hemp as well as flax. He introduced the mahogany tree into the garden from West Indian seeds sent up by the Court of Directors in 1794-95. Similarly, teak was first planted in the Calcutta Botanic Garden and plantations were later established at several other places in the Bengal Presidency. Teak plantations, however, were not successful in Bengal. Roxborough initiated important civil constructions too, such as a wall and railings along the riverside, the bridge near the large banyan tree, and a bungalow for European gardeners. To accommodate his large family, that is, three spouses and 12 children, Roxborough built a three-storied residence inside the garden. Known as Roxborough's house, this rather grand accommodation cost 15,000 rupees in 1794. The building is unique in plan, furnished with a long veranda, a large number of doors and window frames, all exquisitely carved. Roxborough also set up a herbarium in the garden. He had a number of European assistants, including his eldest son, William Jr., and gardener, Alan Bowie. As we saw, he had a team of Indian artists to illustrate plant specimens. By the time he retired in 1813, some 2,542 drawings had been completed. These illustrations are still available in the Central National Herbarium of the Botanical Survey of India in Kolkata. Of course, copies are found at the Royal Botanical Garden at Kew, too. The Natural History Museum has some 1,160 copies. Roxborough himself made these drawings meant for John Fleming. When he left India in 1813, Roxborough handed over the manuscript Hortus Bengalensis, one of the two copies of this manuscript, Flora Indica, and 2,533 life-size colored drawings of plants with dissections to William Carey in charge of the Sirampur Garden. Carey arranged for the publication The Hortus Bengalensis, a catalogue of 1,510 plant species cultivated in the garden. In 1820, William Carey decided to publish The Flora Indica. There were some additions by Nathaniel Wallach, who had succeeded Roxborough as superintendent and had made large collections in Nepal and Malacca. The first volume, which contains many notes by Wallach, was printed at the Mission Press Sirampur in 1820, and the second in 1824. The scheme, unfortunately, did not go any further. Later, in 1832, Carey published a complete edition of the Flora Indica in three octavo volumes. Since the author's two sons, Captains Bruce and James Roxborough, paid for the publications, Wallach's editions were discarded. This edition became rare and expensive with time. That is why C.B. Clarke had to publish a verbatim reprint in 1874 at his own expense. This volume contained Roxborough's account of the Indian cryptogams, which the Carey volume could not accommodate. 
It had been printed by William Griffith in the Calcutta Journal of Natural History in 1844. Though arranged on the Linnean system and with nomenclature largely obsolete, Roxborough's book remains a mine of wealth on Indian economic botany and also the only compendious guide to the plants of the plains. Roxborough took a manuscript copy of the Flora Indica to England and submitted it to Robert Brown. This is now in the Botanical Department of the British Museum. It contains many notes by both Roxborough and Brown, not available in the printed editions. Roxborough also published botanical description of a new species of Suetania or mahogany from London in 1793. He published a number of articles in Transactions of the Society of Arts, Asiatic Researches, Nicholson's Journal, Tillock's Philosophical Magazine, Transactions of the London Medical Society and Transactions of the Linnean Society. These mostly dealt with Indian botany, especially from a commercial standpoint. They covered, for instance, hemp, kachuk, teak, the butter tree and sugar cane. But there was also quite a bit of anticipating what would later be called natural sciences and still later ecobiology. The lac insect, a species of dolphin from the Ganges, on silkworms and on land winds. He was particularly interested on the lacquer insect from which the substance lac is made. Dr. Nathaniel Wallach probably distributed Roxborough's dried specimens. Hardly few exist now, but his numerous detailed drawings compensate for this loss to some extent. Roxborough returned to Edinburgh, where he eventually died in April 1815.